Okay, so you see we got all three left legs, three right legs, three shoulders, hips, left, three shoulders, hips, right. That's a lot of screwing. Just saying. But anyway, <clears throat> this is what the legs come out as. Put the little black nut in there, or screw in there just so it doesn't get lost. The left and the right's pretty much the same thing, just one's curved the other way as you can see. All the hips slash shoulders. And the fun part, these slide together somehow. For that, you'll need the M312s. I think you need six of them. The M3 nuts, again, need six of them. Okay, did not make a mistake. This is a right one. Anyway, slip them together like this. I'll show you how I did that here in a second. Fun part, see that nut? Yeah, right there. Might even be able to see him from here. Oh, there you go. So you put the bolt through here, the nut in there, tighten it up. Lock them together. That's the right hand hip. Not as difficult as it looks. Freaked me out too at first. So this little plenty piece down. Okay. Plenty piece down. This is where the nut's going to go. You can find a way to get it in there easier than what I do. Good for you. And then this one, there's where the bolt hole goes through. Slides right up in there like that. And then your nut, sorry, your bolt goes in here, the nut goes in here, and I'll just show you how I fiddle it in in there because that was interesting. So I just take the nut, kind of drop it down in there, use the screwdriver to line it up into that hole, Apparently a lot easier said than done. There's a nut. I just flipped it out is all. <laughs> flipped it out again. I wonder, could you do it like that? Oh yeah, that might work. Oh wow, I got it. Let me just tighten it up. You don't want to go too tight because obviously it's acrylic. And now you can see that nut in there. And turn it the right way. Trying to look at the camera, look at you at the same time. Yeah, he's in there. You can see him better from over here. Two of the right side ones are done. Let's do one more. That was fun. Now that we know what we're doing, pointy in down. Slide this up and in, like that. Have your bolt ready. Finger over the hole on the bottom so it doesn't slide through. Grab the nut. It's easier than that earlier. Oops. And that's why you have to have your finger on the other end. Keep it from sliding out. Okay, 
don't have the bolt in there all the way. All right, let's start over. Bolt up a little bit snug. You see that nut is in there, bolt head. It's actually pretty ingenious, kind of locks them together. So that's the three rights. I'm going to do the three lefts and then we'll be back. Okay, I got those done. Now we're doing this and putting the power board into it. Ah, mine's up on those two. So the two buttons go towards the front. The front's the one with these two little holes. Back size has one. It's also where the two power cords are on the back. The easiest way to orient this, from what I've seen, is all the inputs for the servos go to the same side that the servo horns are pointing up. Now we need the, let me double check the bolt size. M258 and standoffs. So this and this one. So we need four of each. And again, this is going into a circuit board, so PCB board. You don't want to over tighten them. When you want them tight, you don't want to put them apart. Alright. The screws go in from the servo horn side, the power supply, the pins for the servos. Easier said than done. One. Put one of those nuts on there to kind of hold in. And then we'll do the diagonal one across. Getting these little screws up is fun too. Light up the holes. My fingers just aren't that tiny. I need a pair of pliers. Oh, I had a pair. What are I doing? In between those pins and those caps, my fingers just don't fit. Not going. Good. Then we'll do the other one. That's what I think I can get my fingers on. This last one. 
last one. I don't think I can get my fingers in there either. Nope. That's the bad thing about having big fingers. Tiny screw pop, come on. <laughs> was magnetic earlier. Oh, the screws aren't magnetic. Okay, well, that's not going to work. Put him in. I can get my finger on him, I think. Yep. standoff. Not sure. I think the pie goes on the other side of this. Not 100% though. Okay, now I am going to snug them up just a hair. Holding the back of that spacer or nut, whatever you want to call it, with my fingers. Nothing dramatically tight. Metal on metal, I probably would even suggest Loctite. Instructions don't say anything about that, but. So there's that piece. And then back here is where the LED module goes. Let's keep this piece of foam under it. That LED module, here it is. Sits up there on the top. Actually, I'm not sure if he's on the top. actually the bottom which I thought this is the top we we'll use the m312s did I don't know what order there it takes two bolts two nuts m3 12s I'm not sure let me just double check it Yeah, the instructions say M3. Okay, well, that's what we're going to do. Oh, where did I get that? Up there down here. I just want to see if these fit. It seems awfully big. Nope, they fit. Okay. Two nuts for the other side. I'm just going to hold those two. Yeah, as soon as those stick up, there's M10s or th M310s, but it says 12s. Don't know why, but that's what we're going to use. Tight. I think they'll grip into the acrylic. Let's find out. Let's see if we can snug them down a little bit. Don't want anything being loose. Okay. Oh, get out of there. So the LED board. 
the motor control board or servo control board. They have their little logo on here and their logo there, the Freenove. We're going to call it Freenove. I'm assuming it's short for Free Inno Innovation. Free Innovation. Anyway, we're going to call it Free Nove. What's next? Shows connecting these two with a three wire, yellow, black, red. And it very definitely shows the red if you're holding it this way. The pin's at the bottom, but the yellow's at the bottom and the red's on the top, so it puts black in the middle. We'll see if that's right. Actually, it really shouldn't make a difference as long as you wire it in the same way. Hmm. Let's see if it does fit the other way. It does. Well, it very clearly shows red on top, yellow on bottom. I think as long as you keep them straight and you don't cross it, it really shouldn't matter. So we'll keep yellow on top here. Don't want to go in that way. Let's try red on top. Red on top fits. Let's switch this around. It does say it's the other way. It don't fit that way. Well, that is a problem. So it'd be all right if they were staying straight across as it shows, but these have to cross. If you cross them, you're going to be hooking the polarities up backwards. And that's just not good. I think I just found out something. I hope I'm right. Nope. Damn it. So, I mean, I can pull the wires and flip that end piece around. It very clearly shows wired like this. Red right across the top, yellow across the bottom, black in the middle. In so doing, the end piece, the Molex connector, is backwards. Is that a mistake at the, the warehouse, the manufacturer? I mean, I guess we can trace the leads down and find out which one's positive. Just double checking I'm not doing something stupid. Red on the bottom, black in the middle, red on the top, holding it like this, the pins at the bottom, it is backwards. That Molex connector needs to be flipped. 
I'll be back. I'm going to double check, yeah, double check a couple of their websites. See if they show that that changed for some reason. If not, we'll push these pins in, pull them out, and flip it around. I want to make sure it's right though. Okay, well, I emailed them the support at Freenova, Freenove. Um, everything shows that they should be straight across means one of these Molex connectors is backwards. So I sent an email to him. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so before we look at the email I got back from them, this is what I ordered. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. Let's get that to show. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like when he's done. Now here they got the cable management kind of pretty good. I want to do a lot better than that. I'm just going to go through the parts list here real quick with you. Those are ready to carry a basketball. And it's about the size of a basketball. I missed that when I was ordering this. Did not realize it was that big. It's got face recognition. It can go to sleep. It recognizes colors. It can watch TV. Yeah, it's got a lot of things it can do. You can make it push things over. It knows how far things are away controls your phone and or your computer. Tons of instructions online and they are, that's what I'm using. They're working quite well. Let's see, kilograms. And I think it's a little heavier than that. I'm gonna weigh it when I'm done. Anyway, only 18 people have given it reviews. Mine is not there yet. Seven answered questions. This is basically what they say. They have an online video. You can go there and check it yourself. Um, the tutorial and the codes for programming your Pi, they also have listed. I do recommend going to GitHub. Um, oh, where did I put that? I think it was down here. There it is. Let's open here with a new tab. Yeah, so you can go to their GitHub site. The web page is right there across the top. It has everything, it has the codes, the instructions. You can just copy and paste this into your Pi and it'll pretty much do everything for you. Uh, this is where I emailed, because I had an issue. And then they have some short information. Not a lot there. Um, I think this part number, yeah, FNK0052, that's the one we have. But anyway, back to them. Um, doesn't have enough range to make it upstairs. They said, maybe, they haven't developed or set up the program to do that, you can write your own. Um, quite a few people liked it, no issues that I've seen there. I got a three star, I don't know why. But anyway, so I sent an email to them, and where is it, right here. They are on Chinese New Year until tomorrow. Well, that sucks. <laughs> so I'm not going to get any direct response from them. What I might do, there's a link to, I guess I can put it in the comments here, ask a question. Uh, I was hoping to see somebody's picture that might show the wiring for the LED, but alas, there's not. This guy, he had a he did the, the thing from the wild, wild west. That's just kind of cool. plugged it in as is. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I 
fudge. It looks like they just updated the tutorial on this too, 16 days ago. Don't know what they changed in it. I didn't see the old one. So I think what I'm going to do for now. I didn't realize there were buttons there. Load. Oh. They're not momentaries, they're on off switches. This one says control, that one says load. I don't know if they're corresponding to the power or not. I've got that far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this. I'm just going to leave this dangle in the back. I'm not going to change or do anything with it. We'll go on ahead and get everything else done. Um, I think this part sticks out the back, so it should be pretty easy to get to. If I have to redo it, I can redo it if it's supposed to be crossed. Because their book quite clearly shows, or their instructions, is red is across the top on both, black in the middle, yellow across the bottom on both. This plug, however, forces it to flip. So it's crossing the wires, the red and yellow crossing top to bottom, which would probably short things out if that's not right. And I don't want to change it because if they've updated or modded this LED board, I mean, yes, I can trace the friggin' wires if I need it to, I guess. I think we're going to, well, put the rest of it together until it becomes an issue where I, I can't get to it. Then we'll start tracing wires if we need to. But let's get this build going. I want I want to see this move, even if it don't have LEDs right away. What's next? So it's showing the header, which is this thing, I think, or is it this? APU 6050. Label, oh wait. Hmm. Is it this? I don't know why this one's just floating around in the box and this one's in here. Well, it shows it plugs into this. So that has to be this. There's two rows and only one row here. This has two rows on both sides. So I'm going through their instruction sheet, parts list, part one. It shows the, the spider shield, which is, what is it called? I can't even remember. This is what we're talking about right here. And it shows the screws and the nuts and the bolts and the spacers. It shows the servos, all the acrylic pieces. It shows the LED module, the camera, the ultrasonic, the connection board. This is the one that was in the package. The two cords. Uh, actually, I want to double check that. No, it shows it exactly as they have it pictured. 
right on the flat side of both wires. And then the white side, okay, I'll show you what I'm looking at. So in here, you should be able to see my mouse. Well, it turns into an arrow in here. Right here, see those three silver parts where the pins are? Red's on top. Over here, same thing, you see the metal parts, red's on top. That is the wire I have. But one of these connectors doesn't fit the LED, this part here, with the red on this side. It flips it. That's where my dilemma is. But anyway, let's go on. Then it shows the tools, shows that piece of paper where you unfold it, shows me how big this silly thing is. You need a battery, you need a pie, it goes through all the parts. I'm gonna jump to these a bit. All the different versions of pies that are out there. And then you get into the programming side of things. Um, I'll get to that later after we get this, after we assemble it. Way down here, I think we're on like 20. Yeah, there's a little bit of programming, but it's pretty simple. All right. So this is where we were when we started putting things together. These are the instructions I was looking at. I did that. That's how we put the legs together. That's how we put the shoulders and the hips and the joints and stuff together. And then pin the three together with the nut and the bolt. Right and left. Got that all done. Put the board on with the spacers on top. The screws. Put the LED board here on the back. So this is the issue. These two spots right here. I don't have any issue. This shows red straight across the top, yellow straight across the bottom. Very clearly it shows that. Let's zoom in a little bit so you guys can definitely see what I'm talking about. And they came in and drew these. Now the way the Molex connector is, one of these has to flip. So red will be coming down to here, and then yellow will be going up to there, black being in the middle will be the same. And it doesn't say anything more than that. Frustrating. But anyway, so let's jump past that. It says this header goes on here, and the pie bolts on top of spacers. All we're concerned with this. Nothing is labeled that. Nothing is just floating around in the box. It looks like it's going on the back side of that double header. the module in on the right. Okay. It actually says that there. Plug it into the right. I did miss that. Alright. Let's take a look. So we were looking at it in the picture like this. That would be the right. So it is plugged in. Let me see if I can see my camera. There it is. So I plugged it in. It's lined up closest to this side. Um, I think it says load, load on this side. So it's closest to this. And then there's a gap. And of course there's the wiring that I mentioned where they clearly show the red going straight across. And in so doing, this plug with red on the top will not plug in. It has to go the other way with this plug, which puts yellow on the top here and red on the bottom. Red on the top. And there. We're going to leave that. We're going to pretend we already did it. Now I need to get my pie and bolt that on. And then this piece that was in the, the baggie that has no circuitry on it, it's got nothing. 
of the nostatic bag. This one that has chips and something on it, just float around in the box. Not my favorite. As long as it works, can't complain. Let me get my pie, get that. Well, I'll get my pie and then I'll be right back. <laughs> 